ओके सो गुड मॉर्निंग डियर स्टूडेंट टूडे आई एम गोइंग टू स्टार्ट a new part of this chapter that is unimolecular reactions and it is comes under the course ch19 and unit 4 there are many types of the unimolecular reactions and various theories have been proposed to study all those unimolecular reactions particularly most of the reactions are gaseous reactions but today i will discuss or i will explain only the first theory of unimolecular reaction that is called lindman theory and as you know that if you understand that lindman theory then you can derive any other theory so therefore always the first theory is very important now if you see your course content you will find that there are four unimolecular theories and fortunately the first unimolecular theory was derived in 1922 and today is 2024 and in 2022 100 celebration of 100 years of unimolecular theories is also organized 100 years of this so it is a very 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 old theory and very simple theory and there are large number of good books monographs are available in our library for advanced studies you can you can refer such type of specific books on the theory of the unimolecular reactions but for general purposes i suggest chemical kinetics by kj ledla and my simple derivation is based on mostly i have taken some information from the chemical kinetics by ledla and i have also referred the physical chemistry pw atkins but believe me that is a very very simple theory very simple theory so as i told you just a few minutes ago that in 2022 royal society of chemistry because he was a professor lindman was a professor of oxford university and he belongs to england so they actually celebrated this 100 years of unimolecular reactions and one of the student of a very another great scientist who discovered the rrkm theory rudy marcus he is a student of this stephen ivenstein he actually written a very good paper so i have also taken some of the information from this very important research paper of this important theory of the unimolecular reactions because there are two nobel prizes in this unimolecular theory because the when you when you study the hinsalud theory sidal normal hinsalud is also a nobel laureate and when you study the very famous rr km theory marcus is also a nobel laureate so this is the paper that 100 years ago why this paper is important because when they discovered this theories of the unimolecular reaction i will explain that time also there is some controversy because unimolecular means you can understand that there is only one one molecule so it is converted into suppose product or i, I can give the example of 
cyclopropane. I'll give you another example also. Isomerization type of the reactions. So, what was the problem? The problem was that you all know that for any type of chemical reaction, each and every molecules has to acquire some additional energy. And then of course, there must be some collision. But if there is a single molecule, so what is the concept of the collision? So there was a controversy and 100 years ago, I think in 1921, when Perrin proposed some theory that is called the radiation hypothesis, large number of great scientists, I will show that paper to you, so they discussed what is the actual cause of unimolecular theory. And that great Lindman opposed this radiation hypothesis that the molecule acquires energy from the wall. That is called the radiation hypothesis. And ultimately other scientists also contributed and ultimately we will get the final derivation of unimolecular theory. So now let me see the, as you know the my style of teaching is that I will first explain the, I will first explain the course content. So there are four important theories. Today, as I told you that I will discuss this Lindman theory first and then Hinsalud theory. There are some problems. Here is some problem, then modification, then Hinsalud theory. Hinsalud is a novel laureate and then again some problem. So Rice, Ramsperger and Kassel propose another theory. That is a very important theory and based on the statistical mechanics as well as the quantum mechanics that is called the RRK theory. And this is the ultimate theory, the very important theory for the examination point of view as well as for learning process that is called RRKM theory. Means, and you see the great scientist Marcus. So, Rice, Ramsperger, Castle, and Marcus. So, you can understand that is a modification of this theory. But in between the RRK and RRKM theory, there is another small theory. I will very briefly I will explain the contribution of this letter in this letter. He proposed some of the degrees of freedom and other things. He has taken this also in 1939. So, but Today's agenda is only the Lindman theory and fortunately this Lindman theory as I told you many times that Arrhenius equation is related to the collision theory. Collision is related to transition state theory like that. Similarly, this Lindman is related to Hinsalud, Hinsalud is related to RRK, RRK is related to RRKM and it is also related to the activated complex theory. So, these are all, all interconnected. You will enjoy because that is not at all difficult. Very slight derivations are there, of course. Okay. And this is the great scientist. Uh, his name is Frederick Lindman. And uh, he contributed in specific heats also. He contributed in the area of physics also. He contributed in the area of, and I think after retirement or he joined in the politics. And I think he was a, uh, minister in the uh, council of that Winston Churchill cabinet. It is an old story, but we are only concerned about this, his contribution in the unimolecular theory. Sometimes what happens, if you, if you read some good books like Laidler and other things, actually in some books, because what happened when Lindman 
studied this unimolecular gas reaction in the same time another scientist his name is christian sen in 1921 he also did similar type of the work in his phd thesis so therefore sometimes in some books that so don't get confused sometimes what we call it is called linman christensen mechanism but basically it was proposed by the linman linman but in some books you will find that so don't worry it can be called as a linman christensen equation because simultaneously this scientist is also discuss this thing and then uh, himselwood actually modified this theory and uh, he also contributed for the molecular so sometimes we can call it is a because there are a large number of application in surface chemistry and other things then you can call it is a, a linman himselwood mechanism is also that but ultimately it is unimolecular theory proposed by linman now i am coming to some simple example of you must know at least like first reaction you must know at least five example of first reaction some example of unimolecular reaction with their rate constant now the most important most simple most simple reaction is br2 converted into 2 br sulfuryl chloride converted into so2 and cl2 and this is also very important very important reaction because they have determined the rate constants and other thing that is called the isomerization of methyl isonitride gas of course it is also gas and it is converted into acetonitrile so it is it is called the isomerization type of the reaction because most of the unimolecular reactions are organic reactions and such type of the things and as i have already discussed the cyclopropane reaction of the cyclopropane isomer is a very common reaction so it is converted into the propylene or the propene so these are the you can get other information from the literature but you must know some of the simple reaction uh, of unimolecular types now question arises normally as i have already discussed normally what happened that molecules acquires energy due to the collision and that was the problem because when they measured they have seen most of the reaction is first order suppose this is and some cases it is second order is a examination question so who is responsible for that collision who is responsible for that collision because there is only one one molecule so who is how it another is react with this and formation of some it so that is as in normal collision relative kinetic energy exceeds the threshold energy and there is a bond making and bond breaking that was the problem there is 102 years old chemistry very old chemistry how can one account a unimolecular reaction a single molecule is going for a reaction that was the big question and of course how can the results in a first order rate law short answer type of the question at very high pressure high concentration the unimolecular reaction generally i am talking about the gas phase unimolecular reactions are follow first order kinetics but at low pressure it is second order kinetic why i will solve that part i have already told you the story of these things earlier it was thought that suppose there is a single molecule so don't worry 
if I supply some heat from here, that is called the radiation hypothesis. This is also a very big scientist, J. Perry, that there is no problem that that different molecule acquire energy from the walls. That is called the radiation hypothesis. But when he was published a paper on the radiation hypothesis, there is a discussion in Royal Society of the Chemistry, one of the best society and this is the original research paper I have taken from the Royal Society website and you will be very happy to know that the great scientists like Lindman was there, Arnias you all know, Arnias, you see the, you will be happy to see the scientific development, how serious they were just to discuss about the unimolecular theory and they are opposing the radiation hypothesis. You see the name of the scientist, Arnias is a novel laureate. Langmuir, you all know, Langmuir in salute mechanism is very famous. And one Indian scientist, Neil Raton Dhar, very, very famous scientist, very Lavad in our Dhar. Professor Perino was also there. And Professor W.C. McLewis, who discovered the collision theory. So you see, they actually, the title is Discussion on the Radiation Theory. And I, I will not show you the whole, whole thing, but uh, in view of the short time at my disposal, I will confine my remarks to the criticism of the radiation theory of chemical reaction, which I myself have published. So, just it is not necessary to understand all the things, but you can write that there are some problem in the radiation hypothesis and in order to overcome this problem, Professor Lindman proposed a new theory and this theory is that this A is react with similar type of A. In some books, those don't worry for that, some book this A may be M that is some, some books it is written inert gas, in some books it is written bath gas, in some research paper. So, even if, if you can write A as A, no problem. In some books this process is called the energization process, some books it is called the energization process, in some books it is process the activation process, but do not confuse with the activated complex and other, and other things. So, so, therefore, no problem. So, you can write A plus M also or you can write A, A plus A, A star and then A star is converted into product. But when there is a collision, there is a time lag pause and during this time lag, some of the energized molecule may return to the original state. So, we have to consider that condition also. And that process is called de-energization process, something it is upon nucleus. So, the rate of the reaction does not depend on all the molecules that are activated or energized. Because during this time lag, some of the energized it may be returned. So, whatever the remaining molecules that will convert it into the product. But what is the demerits of the Lindemann theory? There is no concept of energy distribution. There is no concept of the energy distribution. Let me explain step by step. So, first process is called 
इनर्जाइजेशन प्रोसेस ई एन ई इनर्जाइजेशन प्रोसेस आई आई यूज ए सिंपली ए नो प्रॉब्लम एंड सेकेंड प्रोसेस इज द डी एनर्जाइजेशन प्रोसेस वॉट इज आवर डेरिवेशन वील डू फर्स्ट वॉट वुड बी कंडीशन इज द हाई प्रेशर and what is the condition of second uh, low pressure why there is a conversion of first order kinetics to second order you follow my point now let me just derive the things merits and demerits i will let me now derivation very simple derivation okay so i'll start from here a a now i think you can see it there also no problem just you show first phase and then you can just you check one one equation if it is all right then you can see so then d energization process and the rate constant is k1 k1 and t k inverse you can write m also no problem i just what i am using m a then this a star converted into total and rate constant is k2 this clear very simple equation and when you solve this in solute also same equation will be there okay so first process is called as i have told that is the energization process and second is the deenergization process and there is a time lag time lag between the energization and deenergization process okay so quite natural you all know that this is the first step because there is a equilibrium and this is the rate determining step so rate of that reaction can be determined k2 very very simple derivation but why it is important because it is the starting point of unimolecular reaction but basically it is very simple so you all know these things that we have to substitute the value of a star here so system is that applying steady state approximation steady state approximation oh, 
only two three line derivation that's all applying steady state approximation so this side we can solve it dy dt of a star because we have to remove this energized in some book it is also written activated state and deactivated state so there is no problem if you can write energization and deenergization process absolutely no problem so that is equal to in first case it is produced so we can write k1 a square and if you use the m so you can you can even write like that k1 a and m also but here actually i am using to avoid any confusion i am just same in that type of so it is a but it is a third party then in deionization process concentration of a star is decreasing so i can write here minus minus k inverse 1 a star and a this part and again activated or energized state is decreasing so again it is minus k2 a star as because it is steady state approximation you all know that this uh, yes very good this can be zero so what i can write i can write k1 a square is equal to if i take this a star common so it will be k inverse 1 a plus k2 clear very simple very simple and this is 100 100 years old chemistry but why it is important because all this derivation is based on this lindman theory okay no problem so a star is equal to k1 a square divided by k inverse 1 a plus k don't write capital always k is like that not capital k so substitute the value of this from here Here. so i can remove this thing so that so what i can get A rate is equal to k1 k2 a square divided by k inverse one a plus k2. Now, most important point I am coming. It is clear. I will substitute these things. Now the condition. Now the time lag at high high concentration or pressure, high concentration. This reversible process because there is a time lag. Energization process and deenergization process. There is a pause, and if the pressure is very high, concentration of this reactant is very high, 
so what happened that that k1 inverse a will be greater than k is a condition when they studied these things so what happened so k2 can be eliminated because there is only very few energized molecules because most of the energized molecules converted into revert back to the mole original state so therefore so what should i write i can write k1 k2 a square this k2 may be eliminated so divided by k inverse 1 a so this a is a cancel so i'll get this if i write k1 k k one is a k infinite so it will or or it dash so what is first order or second order first order so this is a examination question that if the pressure is very high concentration is very high the value of k inverse 1 a is much greater than the k2 so k2 can be eliminated and then we'll get the first order kinetics on contrary if the pressure is low concentration is low this k1 a is less than k so i will eliminate this k1 so what i'll get k1 k2 a square divided by k2 is k2 k2 cancel so it is k1 a square so it is second order kinetics but our objective is to our objective is to determine the because it is a linman unimolecular theory so our objective is to determine the unimolecular rate constant but this is the condition at high pressure it is first order and second order and the low pressure low pressure and therefore the radiation hypothesis is reduced or not not accepted by the scientist and they accepted this terms and condition of the unimolecular lindman theory this is the first part of the lindman theory now the second part is that how you determine the unimolecular rate constant so let me erase some part first order second order it is over i can also remove this part now second part listen very carefully now what happened that in one case rate is this another case suppose the unimolecular rate constant is written as unimolecular rate constant is written as k1 okay so whatever we are determining rate is directly proportional to the k1 what is k1 unimolecular rate constant uni molecular rate constant because that is your objective uni molecular rate constant so it is k1 and a so in one case that means what you will do k1 a is equal to k1 k2 
a square divided by k inverse a the last part of this equation and it, it will take only two minutes so this a okay so i can write k1 unimolecular rate constant is equal to k1 k2 a divided by k inverse a plus k2 that's all now we have to plot a graph between the concentration and concentration suppose i just slight modified this equation that means both numerator and denominator is divided by both both numerator and denominator is divided by k inverse 1 so k1 is equal to final final equation so k1 k2 k plus 1 you follow it because what i divide both numerator is equal to k inverse 1 a both the part so this a cancel with this a so k1 k2 this one first part divided by 1 1 k1 divided by k1 this this 1 plus k2 yes this is final equation this is the most important thing this this the relationship between because that is actually but you have see very carefully energy is not associated with that equation energy is not associated with that equation but that ratio is very important the energization process and the deenergization process and the k2 now what they did just to determine just to determine rate constant they plot a graph between k1 and a that is the most important point of that things that is just like a hyperbola type of things hyperbola and there is a up to certain if i suppose this this actually is red color okay no problem there is a saturation i can write it is a k i can write it is a k infinite one and this is half and this is a false of false of there is first demerit there must be a straight line or whatever it is so that when you increase the concentration of this one reactant so in case but up to certain time that may be is a k finite and it can be k half and one this can also be determined then you know the double reciprocal plot they just if i just that is a possibility of some numerical problem i am coming to that point last part oh my god right
now now if i double uh, one divided by because i am not getting the straight line so in order to get straight line uh, it is a simple mathematics the mathematics student can also double reciprocal plot so one upon q just to reciprocate it k1 k inverse 1 just uh, you just reciprocate these things k1 k2 I think one upon k inverse one. I think k one k two like that, isn't it? There is some. Just a minute. You solve it. I think one by k inverse one. So k one. K inverse will be because that is actually no 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 K inverse one will be right and K one K two and one plus K one A you solve it you will get the same thing. Okay, you solve it. Now we plot a graph because we are not getting the straight line. So if I now plot that is the most important negative point of that linear equation. Now if I plot a graph between. One by k one and one by e. So theoretically, what happened? If there is a hyperbola, so. it must be a straight line it is theoretical it should be but what happened this is the demerits of the lenman theory such type of again there is a false of we can use another color this another color so that is the most important uh, demerits of that theory because uh, it should be a straight line and therefore hinsel would proposed a new theory he said he proposed a new theory and uh, this theory no i think there is some problem because if you if you, you just solve it Will you get this? 
you solve it anyway let me start the demerits points there is some problem i think so now coming to the last part the demerits of that point first is the merits first is the merits merits is that is the first quantitative model why am talking about the quantitative model because we have we have tried to solve it we have tried but we are not getting but at least second is the two step process very simple and third is the steady state approximation method we apply and we can get this end so there are three important points but why it is not very useful and what are the demerits now i am coming to that point this this is as i told you many times this is very important thing also why let me no information for molecular degrees of freedom because simply we write k1 k inverse 1 and k2 1 plus plus 1 a so every time there is a problem how we calculate this k1 and k inverse 1 how we calculate the k2 there is always a great problem and in k1 is not associated with any energy k inverse is not associated with any energy k2 is not associated with any energy so no information about the molecular degrees of freedom no information about the distribution of energy how energy is distributed and naturally if there is a energy conserve there must be change in vibrational and rotational modes of the things so therefore this theory is not very popular and in the next class we will study the modification of linman theory that is called hinsel root theory thank you